Hi there and welcome to video diary number two produced by the Wheatley Hill Heritage Society to give you enjoyment and the opportunity to reminisce on times gone by. Video 2 will depict school photographs which will date back to the 1920s and up to the 1950s. It will also show you all older members of our, of our society of Wheatley Hill and Thornley, past and present. Parts of Wheatley Hill as it is now and also as it was back in the early 1900s. And so we hope that you will sit back and enjoy all of this and much more as the video moves on. As always, we have our regular narrator, Billy Middleton, who will talk you through this wonderful experience. And so, on behalf of the Wheatley Hill Heritage Society, I am taking this opportunity to thank you most sincerely for your support. Thank you so much. Here we've got Thornley Roman Catholics, the infant school, standard one of 1950. The left, on the back row there, you'll see the two Doyle's twins. Everybody knew them. Now, if you come along a little bit to the right, I'm not going to name everybody, but as you're coming along, just third in from the right is Michael Bordesara, next to John Knowles. As I say, this was 1950. Now here we've got the Catholic school again. This is the junior mixed of 1950. And this is standard two and three. I'm not going to name everybody on here. But if you look to the right hand side there, you'll see Peter Knowles still round about the here. And I'd say this is 1950 and all. Now, we'll go up to Wheatley Hill Senior Boys. Now, this is the football team of the 1927-1928 season. And I've got this photograph of George Paulson's daughter, Enid. Nice photograph, see, going back to 1928. And that's her dad on the left, George Paulson, with the goalkeeper shirt on. He's a good goalkeeper in that case. Now, here we've got Wheatley Hill Infants of 1947. Now, I'm not going to name everybody on here because there's far too many on. But second row from the back, second in from the left, that's me in 1947 when I was five year old. We'll just pan along to the right a little bit and you'll see Les Smith, and George Lee, Ernie Alliwell, Derek Metcalf and Davy George, Ian Graves and Melvin Smith, Jenny Clement and Jimmy Whiteman. Jeff Goines, Henny Blackett. Now we've come down to the front. We've got Ann Walker and Hetty Watson, Diane Stark, Margaret Moore, Ivy Venables, Irene Doan, Sonia Hastings. Just to name a few, but I say this was 1947. Now here's another one of Wheatley Olympians. About 1946, you've got Clive Gregory in the middle, Ronnie Swift on the left-hand side there, John Worthington, Ivan Wilson, Alan Hicks, Sid Saxby. Just to name a few, I'm not naming them all, you've got John Rollins on the back row at the right there and all. There's too many to name there, but as I say, a lot of people know who they are. Now, this is a dance band of the 1940s, Jackie Kane on the piano. You had Ernie Evans, George Graves, Alfie Arps, Jimmy Rutter. So yeah, this was a good dance band in the 1940s, the 30s. Now this is a photograph taken around Wheatley Hill Welfare, around about 1950. I can see Mrs. Brown in the second row off the back Kenny Brown's mother. I don't know many of the older ones, but uh, these is Wheatley Hill school children. It must have been a, a party or something. Go 
what was held in the welfare, but I see it's around about 1950. This photograph was taken in the 1930s. That lady there, it's Bob Robson, the cobbler, it's his wife. And this is one of her babies when she was living down John Street. If you notice to the left, there are the mins, the old toilets, as you might say, in the 1920s and 30s. As I say, it's the only photograph we've got of the mins, it's a good one. And as I say, this was Bob's wife in the 1930s. Another photograph of Whitey Hill infants taken in the late 40s. With uh, Leonardo Middleton on there, Gwenny Brownless, Gwenny Jones, Mary Ruth, quite a few. As I say, this was taken in the late 40s. Now this is outside of Whitney Hill Church in the 1950s. It's Dr. McLean and his wife. It looks as though he's been a Christian for the little one there. And you can see Jimmy standing at the front and his sister. As I say, this would have been early 1950s. Now this is a lovely photograph, this, taken 1928. That's Pyman Street in the background. Not many photographs we've got of Pyman Street. And this is Mrs. Venables, Shayla's mum. And this is a wedding dear, and this is the wedding dress what she's got on in 1928. So here we've got a group of men outside of the Old Workers Club. We've got Bluey Gibson there on the left hand side. Charlie Bainbridge, the bulky, Auntie Barron. Billy Jones, Peter Cairns, this is just to name a few. This was taken outside the Whitney Hill Club around about the late 50s. Now here we've got Joyce Mains in 1956. She worked in the post office in Thornley. This is the post office in the Villas. And this is her standing at the door in 1956. This is another one taken in the 1950s. It's Mr. Parker at the Beehive. And Mr. Parker lived in the Woodcutters Cottage along the Durham Road. You'll notice in the background, Whitey Hill Pit Heap and the aerial flight, because his back garden looked over towards the Pit Heap and the quarry. But I say this is about 19, late 1950s. You know, I think this one was taken in the late 50s and all. You have Kit Hackworth there and John Frost, Bluey Gibson, and there's Billy at the front, Harold Simpson, and on the right hand side there we've got Billy Jones, and I would say this would be the late 50s. Oh, here's Phil Brown sitting in the back street, the Vinci Church Street, up against the closed prop there. And you can see in the background that Smith Street before it was pulled down, the road miners' cottages. And it wasn't pulled out in the early 1950s, so this photograph had to be taken around about 1953. And this is another photograph of Wake Hill Senior Boys, taken with Mr. Edwards. I think a lot of people know a lot of these lads because this was taken in the 1950s. Here's Mrs. Briggs, taken at the Bug Gate in Itchy Church Street, and another photograph from the early 1950s. Now we've got Wadey Hill Junior's top class with Mr. Wright. I'm only going to name one or two on here because there's far too many. There's Kenny Brown's on there, and Ray Turnbull, 
Crutchy Coke shifted away now, Ronald and Lord shifted away, Sid Saxby, Ronnie Swift, just to name a few, Tommy Walker. We'll just see it. People will look at this and they'll know a lot of the people on there. Now this is taken 1961. You've got Randy Sager on the left. It's the sports deer with the band and banner and all the people coming up from the pit. Dave Hurd's on the banner there, next to June Yotson. On the other side, Mr. Redshaw, Sheila Venables, and there you've got Stanhope Street and York Street on the right-hand side. They're the colliery houses, and you can just see the colliery in the background, 1961. Now, this is Bessie Gully with the choir of the Wesleyan Chapel. This was taken in 1946 in the welfare grounds. Now this is Wakey Hill Infants again, 1947. This is Charlie's band. There's too many to name on here again. You've got Jimmy Scott, Benny Harvey, Jeff Crawford and Brian Cairns, just to name a few. I can see when you're looking at it, you'll know more of them. photograph taken around about the 1950s. On the right hand side that's just the top of Stanhope Street. There's Elfie, Elsie Raffles standing in the middle of the photograph and just to the right to say that gable end of that house that's getting pulled down. That was all that was left of Woolmer Horsen Street just before it was all demolished. About 1950. Now this is another photograph that I've got of Elsie. She's walking up towards Thornley Station, and in the background, it's the only photograph we've got of it, but in the background, you've got the signal box, and the, the signals, and the crossing gates, the Thornley crossings, and as I say, it's the only photograph we've got. Thanks to Elsie, it's been saved. Now this is Waitley Hill Senior Girls. There's far too many on it, name. That's it. This one was taken in the 1950s. Now, this is Wakey Hill Infants from class 16 in 1927. That girl right in the middle of the picture with the shoulder bag on, that's Mrs. Foster. It's Joan Jobs' mum, still alive today. And like I say, everyone else on here, I can't name them because they're going to be too far back for me. But she's the only one that I know on this photograph. Because I see we're going back now about 77 years. And it's a bit out of my league, like. Here's another photograph of Wakey Hill infants. They're having a picnic. That lad on the left is Jimmy Rose, and that lad on the right is Brian Bramford. And that girl in the middle, that's Anne Bishop. A few, everybody will know who's on here. We see a tear. Not about the 1950 mark. This is Wakey Hill Women's Institute. Now, I don't know where this photograph was taken. They must have been away on a day trip somewhere because we've looked and better looked and we cannot find anywhere round about here where this photograph could have been taken. So as I say, it must have been a trip away in the 1950s. So I've got a bit to see on this one. Now, this is Mr. Durkin, standing next to the caravan with 
Stavens Terrace in the background would be here. Now this caravan, this was the 60 minute cleaners caravan. Of course in 1958, when the 60 minute cleaners was burned down, they put a caravan over the road from Stavens Terrace and they just done the business from there until the shop was rebuilt. As I say, this was about 1958. This is Wadey Hill Civil Defence and Fire Brigade. You see a stand portion on the left there. Just a couple in, Ronnie Arrington. Look, Moraine Arbs there, Terry Cullen. You'll see the tow trucks up height on the depots. That's where all the workmen's coal used to come from. Then when we come down at the front, you've got Arthur Appleby and Jackie Doan, Mickey Widderfield. Just coming around here to Gordon Carr. As I say, this photograph will be taken in the 1950s. So this is a group of Whitney Hill school boys. I think this was taken in the 1940s. Unfortunately, I know some of the faces, but I can't name them all. The only one I can name is on the right hand side there, and that's Tommy Venables. No, Tommy knows everybody on this photograph. So if anybody wants to Find out who they are, Tommy will tell you who they are. 1969, this is Remembrance Sunday. You've got Mr. Jones there with Wheaton Hill Senior Boys School Band and the parade going to the Cenotaph on Remembrance Sunday. Early 1960s, it's Wheaton Hill Front Street, the jazz band on the sports day. Unfortunately, I don't know any of these jazz bands because they used to come from all over the place, Sunderland, Newcastle, South Shales. So I'm afraid I can't name anybody on here, but this is 19, early 1960s sports day. Now this is Mrs. Foster, Mrs. Durant, Mrs. Rutter. This photograph was taken in the 1930s. It's the only photograph we've got of Gullock Street. Now that is over to the right hand side. And that's all we've got on Gullock Street. As I say, it's a lovely photograph. Now, just behind them, that's the Wesleyan Chapel. Now if we come around a little bit to the left, you'll see the gable end of the Georgia School. And then you'll see the water tanks. These water tanks was what fed the bottom end of Wakey Hill with the drinking water. Now, above them, there was a, a, a scaffold built with a tank on top, and that was to feed the top end of Wakey Hill with their water. This was taken in the 1930s. Now, this is Mr. Broughton sitting at the end of the street. See, so looking down there, you can see the United bus coming up the quarry in the background. And this one was taken in the 1960s. Now, this was taken outside the tube shop, Thornley Colliery in 1961. I'm going to name everybody on here because people recognise some of the people from Wheaton Hill. You've got Benny Nicholson on the left. Next to him you've got Sid Swaller, then Ivor Ranson, Stan Dower, Jimmy McCoy, Gowan Strawn, and then Tut Nicholson. Now on the front row, nailing down on the left hand side, that's yours truly. It's me, Billy Middleton, and Joe Butler, and Norman Howe. This is before my time, this is Thorny Post Office, at the bottom end of Thorny and Hartley Post Street. I don't know the two women in the doorway. I was told one of them was a Miss Gull. She's buried in Whitney Hill Cemetery. But I don't know her. And I say this was taken about 1928. Now this is Thorny Post Office again. With George and Hilda Thornton. They were there on the post office then. And this was taken in 1947.
This was a film that was made in Waitley Hill in the 1960s. We call it the 26. I think everybody will know everybody on this photograph. I'm not naming them all, but you've got Gilbert Tempest, Morris Don't, Benny Harvey, quite a few more there. You'll be able to name them all. This was taken in Black Lane. You can see the school kitchen in the background. And then you had the soldiers club behind that. It's Walter Peacock and John and Cud Frost. This was taken in the 1950s. Now, this is Waitley Hill Colliery, round about the 1920 mark. Now, all these men on this photograph, the old truck in the background, the wagon wayman and overman. I've got all of the names of them, I'm not going to mention them. But on the right, that old man there, that is Mr. Thornton. And in the front row, his son, Mr. Thornton Jr., is sitting in the front row there and all. But I've got the names of everybody. If anybody wants to know who they are, they've only got to ask. Another shot of Wendy Hill Colliery, round about the 1930s. The only man I know on here, is in the back row, third from the right. That's Johnny Raffle. As I say, I'm sorry I don't know any other names, but somebody might know who they are. No, this was taken in the 1950s. I'm just going to dot around here, because there's that many, everybody will know them. You've got Alan Bowes on the left there. You can see the pit ape in the background. You've also got Les Barker, Eddie Watson, Keith Pohl, just to name a few. Let's see, there's quite a lot on here who people know. The two Barters lads at the front, Stephen and Les. Nineteen sixties again, Durham Big Meeting. We've got Bobby Hansen and Johnny Gare. Two of the lads that was in Waitley Hill Band. Nice to look back. Both gone now, but nice to look back. Another shot of the senior boys in the 1950s. I know a few on here. I'll just name one or two of them. In the back row, you've got Jackie Wright and you've got Jake Peacock. You've got Bobby Elliott in the middle row. Just to name one or two of them. You see, a lot of people know who the rest of them are. Now, this is another photograph of Whitey Hill senior girls. Jane Thornton's on there, no Burrow, Burrow Middleton. Quite a few more, though you'll be able to name. I can name a few of them, but I just see this far too many. Early 1950s, these are the top class of the junior school who went to Wellfield, Ray Clish and Mary Henderson, Lucy Chapa, Frankie Byrne, just to name a few of them, Brian Wilson. I say these are the ones that went to Wellfield. And then smile. Well, there's no prizes for getting, guessing who these two people are here. Yours truly, Ray Jackson and me, Billy Miller. This is taken. 1980 in the lounge in the new old Brady Hill, and that chap on the right is Jackie Barker. This is Brady Hill Old Scouts in 1962. Name a few of them Tony Carr and Dickie Hunter, George Armstrong and Les Barker, Alfie Arbs, George Watson, George Pierce, Walter Saxby, 
Great Turnbull. These played a charity football match with the Tyne Tays All-Stars and they drew twos apiece. Because the old scouts work very well for the villagers and they raise a lot of money for different organisations and this was a good earner for the charities. Now, this is Eleanor Goodridge. She's holding Denise Walker. Now, this is the back street of Institute Street in Wheatley Hill. Now, that street in the background, that's the bottom of Wilmer Horser Street. Just in front of that, you can see that wall there. That was the bottom of Pyman Street. It's a good photograph, another one that's been saved, taken in the 19. Another one bringing back memories of Durham Big Meeting in the 1960s. Johnny Gare again, but this time he's with Billy Donaldson. This is another shot from the film that was made in the 1960s. You'll know a lot of the people on here. And in the background there you can see the Harvey and the Hutton Seam Ed Gare. You'll see there's a lot of people on here. You'll know them all. There's far too many to mention, and this was taken in the 1960s. Now this is taken outside the Soldiers Club. I don't know many people on here, somebody will know them all. But it looks as though they've had a, a good season with the darts, because they've got the dartboard there. And I think on the right hand side at the front, I think that's Johnny Gare. And this will have been taken in the 1950s. This is a nice photograph of four Wakey Hill men away for the deer. We've got Steve Raffle on the left, and his brother in law next to him, Jackie Cade. And Steve's dad, Johnny Raffle, Steve's brother Joe at the right hand side. As I say, a nice photograph, and uh, taken it in the 19. This is Mr. Davis in the 1960s, taken outside the pit at Bathsick Wakey Hill. He's having his last smoke before he goes down the pit. You can see the workshops and the lamp coming in the background, and the truck, that's the rear, the rails that went across the road, the way to Thornley. And as I say, this was taken in the early 60s. This is Mr. Sneath standing on the road. Now behind him, as slow as that high, behind him is Walmer Horses Street. You can't even see it. On the right hand side, you can see just the edge of uh, York, Darlington, and Stanhope Street. And right at the bottom, that's Wakey Hill Colliery, with all the workmen walking down towards it. So this is Mr. and Mrs. Paulson. George Paulson's mother and father. You can see them houses in the background. You can see how deep the snow is. That's Peter Lee Cottages, top end of Wakey Hill. You can see this is Enid. I've got the photograph of her, of her dad, the gold cable, in 1927-28. This is Enid's grandparents. Now, this photograph was taken from the back bedroom window in South View. Avril Kendall who gave us this photograph. Believe it or not, them two houses there, they are the two corner houses. That was when they were starting to build Little Terrace. Lovely photograph. But that's where it is, the start of Little Terrace. This is the backyard. I think it's along Green Hills Terrace. But look at the thickness of the snow there. And if you go up, you'll see the chimney pot left hand side there. So I'll let you see how deep the snow was. The next photograph is more or less the same, just to let you see how bad the winter was in 41, 42. Now this is the other photograph I was telling you about. The snow in the backyard, look on the roof, look at the chimney pot. Terrible. shot of a lot of volunteers in Vincent's Corner 
trying to clear the roads so they could get the traffic running freely. But you had to get stuff in and out of the village them days. And with the thickness of the snow them days, it was, you just couldn't get through, so they had to get the volunteers out. Also, they had the army down in Wilma Horse Street, and they used to come and shovel the snow in the village to get, get the, the traffic moving. This is another shot, but I don't know where this one's taken as you can see, just above the snow you can see the gable end and some chimney pots, but I just don't know where this one is taken, but it's in Wakey Hill definitely, and I don't know the, the youngsters, that's all it, but it was 41, 42 in Wakey Hill. Now this photograph here is May Day Parade, and we just don't know where it was taken at. If anybody can help us, if they recognise the village, this was taken because every year the bands and banners went to different villages for the Mayor Day Parade. Now then, if you can help us at all, please, we'd like to know where it was at. Now we're starting off at the front here, we've got Teddy Kane with my Uncle Jack Burrow marching at the front of the banner. Then we've got all the union men, Mr Poole and quite a few more can't name them all. They are all marching with the banner. And this is the banner, the 1951 Wakey Hill banner. Unfortunately, this banner has gone missing. We've tried, better tried to find it, and we can't. So, as I say, we've got the 2001 and the 1937 one still, but this one, we don't think we'll ever find it again. Now, just a bit further to the right, here we have the Wakey Hill Colliery Band following in the banner. Now behind the banner, you'll see a bit the band, you'll see another banner. Now this is the Wakey Hill women's section of the Labour Party. Now if you look over here, you'll see at the top of the street, round to the left, there's another band and banner coming round there. Because these mere days, there was always five or six bands and banners went to these villages for the May Day Parades. But as I say, what I said at the beginning, if anyone knows that this village or where it was taken, I would like to know. Now this is a nice photograph of Gregory's farm. I think this would have been taken in the 1940s. And you've got Robert Gregory on the left, with Ruth in the middle, and William Gregory on the right. Lovely photograph. Now, this is Mrs. Bowden standing outside of her shop. This was down Patton Street. Now, this was taken in 1924. And for those who don't remember, which I don't remember, this shop was next door to the Temperance Hall. The Temperance Hall was the next building down. And as I say, she had that shop in 1924. Now, we have some of Wakey Hill store members. On the left hand side there we've got Billy Cowan standing next to Billy Natras with a store horse in between them. Then we've got Jack Harper, Wolf Armstrong and Kenny Kendall and we think it's the 1950s. It's the opening of the singing end of the Soldiers Club in the 1950s. A lot of people's faces on there, you'll know them. I'm not mentioning all of them. But I think it's safe to say that chap in the middle who's standing up, he, I believe he was the colliery manager, Mr. Richardson. I think he was the chap who was brought in to open it. So you'll know a lot of the faces on there. I mean, some of them have gone years ago all down the country. Sub's not here now. Benson Rowbottom there. And Jackie Madison. You know, every everybody will know a lot of the people on here. But it's about 1950. Oh, here we've got Thornley Corrie Civil Defence Group. We've got Fred Bradley Jr. 
and Senior. We've got Freddie Carter's on there and Matty Connery, Todd Bullock. We've got Les Mitchell. And this photograph was taken in the late 1950s. And Kenny Lonsdale's on the front there and all next to Matty Connery. Late 50s, early 60s. Now this is another one with Thornley Civil Defence, with the wagon. Now I've named everybody on the other one, but George Atkins on this one, and Norman Fort, and Billy Hutchinson, he lived down the Dardanelles at Wakey Hill. And as I say, this is late 50s, early 60s. Now, this is a nice photograph of some of the Wakey Hill mechanics, but Albert Turner, next to George Robinson, Kenny Brown, Ronnie Errington, Terry Cullen, Teddy Smart sitting at the front, just to name a few of them, and this would be taken in the 1960s. Now here's a photograph that was taken in the mid-1950s. It's a lot of our local farmers of yesteryear. Now, on the right-hand side, we've got Alf Robinson from Thornley Hall Farm. Now he farmed up Thornley Hall from 1937. Now today, his children are still farming that farm. Next to him, we've got George Henry Gilson. Then we've got next to him, George Gallon. Now he farmed at High Crows House Farm at Wheatley Hill. Then we've got Bert Johnson, and he farmed at the Grain Hills Farm along towards Thornley Crosses. We have George Beveridge, from Hustle Plough next to him. It's not George Beveridge, it's Gordon Beveridge. You know, he farmed at Hustle Plough. Then we've got Norman Anderson, and he farmed at Hare Hill Farm at Hustle. Now behind Norman Anderson, that gentleman in the black coat, that's Billy Stoker, and he was the engineer at Thornley Colliery from the mid 50s to the late 60s. Now that this is Wakey Hill Scout Hut, it's Christmas 1947. Now, there's loads of people on here, and I'm just not going to name them all because it'll take too long. But we've got a piece of paper up here with all the names on. If anybody wants any names or they're not sure about, we've got them there. But Rhea is going to pan across all the people and you can see who they are. And as I say, this was taken in Christmas 1947. That's the Duke of York. Now, the Duke of York was built in 1894. So this photograph has got to be very early 1900s. The next photograph I'll show you is, is the welfare again, looking in the other direction. You can just see the little town of Pithead. Now, this is the other shot. Now, this is the other shot of the welfare in Little Town. If you know what, it's just to the left-hand corner of the building. You can just see the headgear of the colliery. And at the front, the old motor car and the miners standing around. So this early 1900s. Now, this is Hetton Front Street. Another photograph taken early 1900s. If you notice, the tram lines on the road there. The trams used to run from Sunland right through into Horton and along to Hinton. As I say, this is about 1910. This is old winged quarries. We have 
Tommy Hopper's farm and Fred Nunn's farm in the background. These quarries had worked from the 1800s well into the 1900s. And if you notice, just from the left of the photograph there is the 1988 bridge. Now this bridge used to take all the trucks along to the kilns in the field next to the old hospital. And like I say, this photograph was taken around about 1960. This is the villas in Thornley. This big house on the left with all the ivy up, that was Dr. Todd's house. All the way down there, Stanley Terrace. And on the right hand side of the road, these is all the Greenwood cottages, the miners' cottages. They all pulled down now, it's all grain belt along there. Still got the ropery at the end of the street. And this was taken around about 1950. So this is 1928, 1929, 1930. This is Dyke Street in Thornley. See at the bottom of the street, you've got number two pit, the head gear and the pit chimney. This is how close the cottages were to the pit in them days. So you couldn't keep your house clean for the dust. It was a full-time job, dusting every day and cleaning. See, this was about 1930. Now this shot was taken from the pit heap. It was a massive pit heap at Thorny. And it's showing you number one pit, number two pit, the winders, the boilers, pit chimney. You've got the water tanks in the background with High Street. You've got the pit head baths and the old library. And this photograph was taken in 1963. Now, this is a lovely old photograph, this one. It's definitely a terse. Now, looking at it, it's got to be very, very early 1900s. It could even be late 1800s. But this is a cracking view with the old dirt road and the houses on the left and definitely a terse on your right. And looking at this photograph here, you're looking towards Thornley and Wakey Hill. Well, there's no prizes for guessing where this is. This is the water tanks in Thornley, behind High Street, in the old garages. These tanks was put there for the top one was to feed the manager's house, and the bottom ones was to feed the bottom end of Thornley. These was put in very early 1800s, late 1800s. As I say, it's a good picture. I think a lot of people remember them. Good shot of Wingard Front Street. This was taken approximately 1925 to 1930. Lovely shot. The day when you look down at it, you can still see the resemblance of what it was years ago. It still looks similar to here. Approximately 1900 to 1910, Wingard Crosses. Look at all the children there with the old fashioned dress on. Now in the background, about the centre of the photograph, you'll see a large point. Well that was the Caradoc Pool. And as I say, this is a very old photograph, still a good one, with the crosses. Percy Street. Well, this is all that's left of Lovers Lane. This is the nickname we used to get for Ashmore Terrace. All the newlyweds used to shift it to the army yard upstairs and downstairs. And this is one of the photographs of the, of the, the demolition of Ashmore Terrace. You can notice Percy Street in the background and the back of Alexander Terrace. This was the demolition. Now, this is a part of what's called Thornley. Now, these were Thornley Hall cottages. Now, before 1856, this was the cottages and the pub, the blacksmith shop. 
and it was called the Wayside Inn. In 1856, the name changed to the Board Inn. And this postcard was dated 1902. Then it changed its name again to the Thornley Inn. Now, Mr. Tuppen was the last landlord in there. And there's a bit of a query about when it closed and it was raised to the ground. We have 1936, 1937 or 1938. But this is where you could get a drink in the blacksmith shop. And as I say, the bounds are still there over the road from Thorny Hall Farm. But it's just a little bit more of history. Now we're looking down Thorny Road to Thorny Pit Ape. As I said before, a massive pit ain't this one. And on the left we've got the store and the shop, the houses, down to the dentists. And on the right hand side, we've got First Street. Notice the signpost, public conveniences. There, there were the toilets up the side of the, the old store. This photograph was taken about 1963. Wakey Hill Front Street in the 1950s. Geordison's Fish Shop, beautiful fish and chips. Bob Rocks of the Cobbler. Jesse Gary Cake Shop. And this was in Alexander Terrace, 1950s. And this is another shot of Wakey Hill Front Street. Late 50s, early 60s. See the old triumph bus going on the front street. The school's gone now, but you still see Great Hill Front Street. Now, this is a lovely shot of the halfway house top of Thorny. If you notice to the left, you've got the old dog truck. Now, this is the only photograph I've got on your dog truck. You can see the stand and the outside of the truck that we went on. And let's see, it's the only one I've got for your dog truck. And it was taken in the 1950s. Now, this is the pit laddie in Boerburn. Now, this was taken in 1924. We showed another photograph in the 1950s in the same pool and it was demolished in the 1960s to make way for the A1M motorway. Now this is a little gem. This is Coxo 1912 and all the young ones stand outside the gem picture hall in Coxo. Let's see, it's a little gem. Commercial Street, Truman Corrie. Round about 1910. Notice how all the people and children are all posing for this photograph. They did it in them days. Makes the photographs out. I say this would be around about 1910, approximately. This is another early photograph. Now, this was taken in the field, playing fields, from outside Wellfield School. Wellfield School wouldn't have been built when this was taken, but this was a shot of Wellfield in the early, 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 early 1900s. It's Thorny Front Street in the 1960s, Sports Deer. You notice how that's the, that large building in the middle is the store with the three horse shows next to it. Then you've got the butchers. All the way up the street with shops and houses. Very busy from the street. Nowadays, most of them's gone more green belt up there now. But this is just to show you what it was like in the 1960s. Old Trimbling Village, 1960. 
This is top of the watch bank, turn left. You go down. This is the old Trivial village on the left hand side where they had the red lion and different things. And uh, there's the old photograph, possibly 1910. So this is all Trimbin village again. So this is the same photograph as what I've just shown you, but let's look at up the street with the red line on the right hand side. These trees on the left hand side, this wall, that is the old Trimbin village church in graveyard. Now this is Dunnell Road in Thornley. These people stand outside who's posing for these photographs because this was the, the year that these houses opened. I think it was around about 1924-25. And uh, as I say, this is the opening ceremony of the first houses in Dunham Road. Now we've got Dunham Road again. But this time all the houses is built. So this is possibly 1930 mark. earlier. And there's a miner walking home from work. I see he must have used the bath saw, the bath hadn't been built. But as I say, this is when the whole of Dunham Road was finished. Kirk Shop, Thorny Front Street, Hartlepool Street North, 1910. This shop ended up in the 1950s and 60s, 60s with the, the two dwarfs. Today, it's a house, but it's still standing. Three-story house, and it's still standing today. Part of Coast Street, North Thorn. This is a beautiful shot of Mill Lane. This is in Wingate. You go down North Road, past the school, and the next left hand, you go along there, and that's Moor Lane. This photograph was taken around about the 1920s, so a lovely photo. Another nice shot of Trimland Quarry, Prospect Terrace. You see, around about 1920, you see all the people standing around there. And then down to the right, you got the chapel. And then just past the chapel, you had the bridge where it used to go up into Station Road. And I say this is about 1920. Now, this is a shot going back to about 1920. And it's Hutton Henry Front Street. And it's the only photograph I've got of Hutton Henry. And I say around about 1920. Now, this is a beautiful photograph. Well, it's a painting, as a matter of fact. It was taken from a 1930s photograph of Shotton Station. Real good job done of it. Billy Hudson from Shotton did this painting. It's beautiful. And he's put the train coming at the station. Really beautiful painting. And as I say, it's from a 1930 picture. So, this photograph here was taken not long after 1920. It's First Street, Wheaton Hill. If you notice at the top of First Street, you can see the gable end of Ashmore Terrace and the chimney stack. Lucy Hutton's shop hadn't even been built. Then you've got the end of Alexander Terrace, and as you turn to come round, you'll see the knoll and an old vehicle going up the street. And over to the right, You'll see the store which was built in 1913 at a cost of £6,000 and demolished in the 1970s. But like I say, a Lucy Hutton shop hadn't even been built when this was taken. As I was saying on the 